Hi guys, welcome, welcome to my channel again. Now then, this is a follow-up um, on the first video that I posted. Um, I started my channel new again, because for some stupid reason I was messing around and lost a ton of subscribers and everything else. So I decided to make, obviously, a new channel and start afresh and we'll go from there. So after my first video on the Plasma 45 cut, I got asked loads of questions uh, through email and stuff saying, that's not, a, that's not a cut 45, you've got two extra buttons on the front. So let me just go through what they are. Now, when you buy this model of standard from Jassic, these here, as you can see at the bottom, are not there. You've got basically a blanking plate. Now, initially, when I first did my homemade CNC, as you can see, sorry, Mr. Jassic, I cut my torch trigger and shorted it um, to obviously that gets relayed into the Mac 3 to stop and start my torch. Now, on the instructions, it does say Jassic 45 is CNC ready, but I, I, I couldn't see how it was. Now, obviously, with them guys, you can call them direct, excellent customer service. Um, and I think I dealt with, I think it was a lad called Gareth a few occasions, and they'll bend over uh, backwards to help you. Now, what he was saying is there's an add on board uh, on these machines for Arcor K and also your torch high control. Now, for pretty much pennies, really, uh, Jassic then sent me the board, which I'm going to show you shortly, and he also sends you comprehensive instructions. Now, what also Jassic did is they made the connections and leads up for me uh, and obviously trust me to strip the machine down because I've done a few and added added a few bits to some of the welders I've got um, which we'll get into that in a, in a later date so basically these two connections on the front the one on the left is obviously a torch switch strangely enough um, that controls the torch on and off and the other one is torch out control now as it turns out uh, I use a floating head but not a torch high control because as I quickly found out, didn't really need it for what I do. I mean I cut from pretty much 0.8mm to 5mm regular. I mean this machine will probably cut, I think they say between 12 and 15mm but um, there's no way the stuff I make uh, will be cutting that. So I found the torch high control is mega ample. Now inside the machine, as you can see, this is the extra board you get. Now, that, as you can see, that is wired in, basically ready for torch eye control, but it's pretty much not used. Now, the other connection, as you can see, pretty much get down there, they go to a couple of links on the board, which is, we have a look. That's one of them down there. But it's all comprehensive instructions. Dead easy, really. Um, so you can see where to plug it in. So all that means is the lead is a lead that I put plug into there goes straight into my Mac 3 control board, which basically torch on and off. Just makes it a lot easier. But that's an add-on. So, yeah, guys, it is a normal Cut 45, but I think as standard, it's not supplied. Perhaps, Jassic, perhaps you should include that as standard may help people it may not now inside obviously on the front we've got 2t 40 and we've also got gas test which is pretty easy and then you've obviously got your amps control this here that's the dial obviously the air pressure now you can't generally adjust it like you can if you look on the back there's no control so if you buy a cheap or hf you've usually got a generally regulator on the back where you can adjust now in mine here to keep the air clean go back here I have one there I have another one way behind tucked in all the shelving I have another one there which then another one there so we're, we're going through th uh, three or four um, and you'll be surprised after a full day's cutting there is fluid obviously you got you got your drain pipe will come through there is fluid in there so that is preset from from obviously Jassic. They do recommend in the manual you don't touch it. I've never touched mine. Um, so it doesn't matter how much air pressure you you kind of bang, you can bang maximum on that basically, but that will always limit. And I think 
it's between, I think it's about 75 PSI, I think it is, PSI. So everything that I've cut, which there'll be more and more appearing on here because I'm, it's just getting time to record them because I, I, I'm cutting quite a lot with this thing. Um, that's basically how it's wired up, guys. Now, again, with Jassic, if you're thinking about one of these, I don't get paid by Jassic. You know what I mean? The, these machines that you see here, I've got that Jassic there. I've got the ACDC Mini. However, I've got two power wells. Now, none of the companies pay me or anything like that. This is off my own backs, my own money. Because I have to be careful on my spends, on what I need to do, these do the job really good. Now, shortly, I'm going to be doing a review on that one. And also the XT212, which basically similar in the price bracket. Not only after I do a review on both, I'll do one comparing the both. So you can you can get a shoot, you know what I mean? It'll be a shoot out between them both. But other than that, for the money, um, can't really knock this. This this gets hammered um, all day, a lot of the times, all weekend, and obviously customer service for Jassic up to now in all the stuff you know what I mean that I've purchased from them guys. Really, really excellent. So that's the video on my Cut Forty Five. So it is a Cut Forty Five. If you go to my web, uh, my email address and my web address. You'll be able to see some of the stuff that I have cut with this. And now everything that you see on that has been cut by this. So will future things. Unless unless something changes, obviously, in the future. So that's a basically rundown on my Cut 45. Right, over to a bit of info on my DIY CNC. And then obviously the videos moving forward, you, you know obviously what I use. Obviously, all that's back together now. That's the, that's the Jassic. Now, we pretty much start off, um, I use NEMA 23s, I think it's a 4.2 newton meter versions. I think I got them from Steppers Online. So there's one, two, three, and I, I use a dual motor. Now, when I built this one, because I intended it to use a wood router as well, I just didn't want to go to the, to the belt method, especially with, bolt, especially with the flames, everything else. It's just, I don't know, they just seem too flimsy for what I needed. So after a bit of maths, um, I chose to go direct. They were cheap enough, the cogs. Now, again, they're pretty much, that's a 42 toother. So I can add I can add the steps pretty easy, really, with a bit of maths through Mac 3. Now, obviously, using the rod rotor, uh, 10 mil, it cuts 10 mil plasma. Not quite as simple as that because obviously you've got your cuff uh, width to work out, which I I spent about two days cutting lines and measuring it, which I'm going to go through on, on Mac 3 because if any of you is using this Jassic 45 cut and want to use it on the CNC, I have a shared list and table that I made to add to your tool list and anyone that uses sheet cam will know what I'm, what I'm talking about there. So all the feed speeds, Curve rate, uh, PS high, all that high I've done, right from 0.8 mil straight through to 9 mil. So I'll try and get that uploaded or uh, some kind of sheet. And if you copy it, you, you won't go far wrong. So moving on that one on my side rails, as you can see, I've got two. These are HGR 25 guys, and I was quite surprised because when I ordered these and they came, they were big. Yeah, and. They will take some weight. In fact, it's bordering on. If you don't load those up with enough weight, they don't run smooth. Now, I didn't kind of know that at the time. So that's why I had to add the extra weight on the X gantry. So the both of them, are both sides, uh, are double. Now, even those on my Z or X or whichever you want to call it. Now, again, there's two, there's four. For the guys uh, and they're hit they're even HG 20s now initially I I didn't want to spend a, a ton of money and having it be a one-trick pony because initially I started off doing wood and bit of both now this thing this will cut with a bits this will motor through 16 mil ply in one go not a problem now something that you don't really want to do that but the machine is capable so obviously on plasma with no resistance, piece of cake. So from obviously rod router, it'll do engraving. Now all comes in time, I'll take the videos a bit, a bit by bit. 
Now, like I was saying on the other video, from everything, I think it cost about £900, minus, minus the pan. Um, now, the frame itself is made up of 60 by 60 mil box. And believe it or not, I had some ends in there, but literally from, from, me, from it getting built to an hour after, I've been building stuff. So, ideally, I wanted to strip it back down, spray it, and obviously make it look decent but I just have not got the time um to do it so it, it is literally cutting all the time now what i did realize with it if you're doing it just for cnc plasma these bolts that's tapped in here now that box is three mil wall strength now it's doable now what i did is because i wanted the router as you can see on that one i've got another five mil bar now the five mil bar runs through underneath here so when you're tapping through you've got more than three th you've got more than three threads going through the metal because i found that it'll just rip that straight out of the box so when i actually tapped all these in um as you can pretty much see there um the tap through six seven mil so that that ain't shifting and to give you an idea with it as well is if I mistune it and mess about and I've got plywood on there, now th once the ZX has come down, it will lift the machine yeah, off the table. Now, to give you an idea of that is this is roughly about a four-man lift to get out of here because, as you can see, I built it so no one can nick it. So all that's been converted. It all gets bolted up at night anyway, but anyone who wishes to kind of obviously tilt that out and take it, more than welcome to it because it'll take them a while. Um, now the wood frame is obviously solid timber. The reason why I built it on timber is because metal's horrific. I mean, I built it on that table because as you can see, I don't have a lot of room guys yet and the weather's not the best so nothing can be built outside. So that was as sturdy as what, as what I could get, cost effective. They cost, probably table cost me about 25 quid. Where the equivalent metal one now, what you're looking at, 140. Do you know what I mean? Depending on metal prices, I just think people at the moment just make it up daily and blame it on the Brexit or COVID. One of them. So that that was the cheapest. I may change in the future, but it's solid. It's screwed, obviously to the shed door. It ain't moving, especially with wood when you've got a lot of, when you've got a lot of um, movement and resistance. So that's fine. Underneath the, the water bed, um, I've got a knot. Now that is before everyone says, they go, oh yeah, sticking up, it won't empty fully. That's correct. Now, at the moment, didn't have a dimple die. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you, I was that excited of getting it working. I couldn't really be bothered with that. It just fill it and use it. Now, what I do tend to do, I'll leave my table like that. So the slats, obviously, get wiped down all the time. Because I only put enough slats in to cut the job, um, and I use that um, and hammer. I don't have a problem with rust. Now, through summer months, that bit of a water, it's not that deep actually, will will dry out. If not, I can just use a wet and dry vac, move it all out, fill it up with the next. Now, I used to, under here, as you can see, I used to have um, a self contained tank which I used to pu push water in and out. That was more hard work than what it were because. I just found that it took a couple of days for all the shit to kind of lay on the bottom. And I, it was just more hard work than what it is. So what I just tend to do now is run a garden hose, fill the table while it's filling, mix, get the pH of about between 10 and 11 for the armor hammer. If I do leave it fill for two or three days, no rust at all. And then that hose pipe then will just drain straight into the grid. Um, and as you can see there, that's just my normal. Oh. Tor torch high control and like we discussed the other day they're bolt off and I've got a wood router somewhere but it just gives you an idea obviously what the machine I use and what it's capable of and like I said if you go to my website you'll see the stuff on there that I make from all the signs the footy logos everything else everything is cut by by this not a lot of money guys um, just a bit of effort and a bit of know-how so any questions, obviously, leave your comments, ask, and I'll try and bung a list.
and there'll be more videos shortly of what I make, of what I make coming up shortly. Thanks, guys.